Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, and we're still on our miracle march to victory from Passover to Pentecost. And I guess it'll be what? It'll be the second of uh, June before you know it. <laughs> at, sun, at sundown, the second will be entering uh, Pentecost. And for those of you, whether you're a supposedly Pentecostal or traditional or not, it's still celebrate throughout the church. And I want, what I want you to recognize is um, we want to go back to the first century, to when the church was started, because that's the problem, especially in uh, Western or the Western world. Uh, I, I like the way one of my former professors, who is a, uh, he has a PhD. Uh, he's a very, very intelligent man, very learned. Uh, he's a Morehouse man. And I like the way he says things, you know, he says some things, he says them differently from me, but you have to read between the lines and what he'll say uh, by him. Uh, and I believe he has a PhD in theology from he went to a divinity school. Um, he'll often make statements on Facebook. He's one of my Facebook friends. And what he'll say is, he'll make a statement, he'll say in Western philosophy, uh, or theology rather. And if, I, Dom's correct to say philosophy because a lot of Western theology is philosophy. It actually has nothing to do with the Bible. Um, one of the first things I learned many years ago was when I came back to the Lord at the age of 25 and began to read the Bible for myself. I was shocked at the things that I had heard most of my life that the Bible did not say. <laughs> a lot of it, and Jesus made, made, made a reference to this. And he will remember Jesus came to the lost house of Israel. And then, you know, we got grafted in, all of us who were uh, not of the house of Israel, uh, you know, Hebraic. You know, we, we say today, today's terms, we say the Jews, but uh, we should say the Hebrews. Um, he spoke about the people given credence and they gave more emphasis on the teaching or the commandments of men more than what the Torah, or what we call the Old Testament. Um, and that's a lot of what goes on throughout Christendom. A lot of stuff is man-made doctrine. Now, sometimes they'll try to take a, a piece of, a, of a, a verse or a verse, and they'll try to make a doctrine out of that particular verse. But one of the things I also learned was when the Bible says, you know, Study to show thyself approved, a workman who needeth not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Many, many times, here's all we have to do. When you see that one particular verse or part of a verse that makes a, a scripture, a, a doctrine, go back and read all the stuff that precedes it and then go, comes behind it. And remember, the Bible was not written, especially the New Testament, the Bible was not written uh, in chapters. Men broke it down in chapters. Just like, say, uh, if we're talking about the letters. They say it's like the, the book of Hebrews. Well, that was a letter written to the church, that particular church. You know, man broke it down into different sections. So what we want everybody to do is learn how to get the right perspective on how you look at the Bible because what we want you to do is we want you to not be full of religion because religion will send you to hell, just pure and simple. You can have all kinds of religion and never know Christ because this thing is based on relationship. So you want to work on your relationship. In fact, the Bible clearly lets you know from the old covenant until the new covenant that nobody who ever did anything of any importance in the Bible, it didn't happen unless they had an experience with God. They had to have an experience. So many of you, y'all got head knowledge, and head knowledge will not do you any good. The fallen angels or demons have head knowledge. They probably know the Bible better than we do, but it's not going to do them any good. Satan, who was an archangel, Lucifer, he knows the Bible in and out, but it's not going to do him any good. So just Knowing scripture, just being able to quote it, is not impressive. If it's not living inside of you, 
The Bible talks about being a, a living epistle, which means that the word of God is inside of you and it's alive. What did Jesus say? He said that the letter killeth, or the, the logos or the letter killeth, but the spirit maketh alive. In other words, you get the rhema. It, it, the Bible says, he who have quickened you, you need the word to quicken you. When you get quickened by the word, then your spirit gets quickened. Then you become able to be saved. Because this thing is about a real relationship with God. Because that's what God wants. God wants to have a relationship with you. You are just that important in the kingdom that God is concerned with you. Now, remember the scripture says that God knows every hair upon your head. Now, take those things literal. Again, one of the problems is folk think that stuff is allegory and metaphor. And you're missing it. This stuff is literal. When God says, I am that I am, that's what he means. He's God in the now. He's God in the past. He's God in the future. Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday, today, and forever. And remember, God sits or stands outside of time. You and I are within time. Time means you got a beginning and an end. We are what you would call finite beings. But God is infinite. Now, that's part of the mystery of the gospel. One of the problems with philosophy, especially Western philosophy, is that man wants to sit up and think everything. And, and that's all based on what the Greeks will have come up with. You know? See, if, if anybody, and, and let's, let's face it, I'm speaking from uh, North America, and I live in the state of North Carolina. So I'm a part of Western philosophy and theology, whether I want to be or not. It's, it's just that where I come from and what I have been exposed to. But I know its strengths and I know its weaknesses. So in order for me to become mature and to become more Christ-like, I have to look at things and I don't stop thinking just because I have faith. Just the opposite. Because I'm a thinking individual, I question. We're having a Selah moment right there. I pause on purpose. Selah means stop and calmly think about it. So those of you who have read and seen Selah, that's what it means. Stop and calmly think about it. You don't lose your thinking capacity when you become a Christian. Now let me say this. You don't stop thinking when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. A lot of folks still think that you don't think anymore, and that's, that's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. First of all, if we believe what the Bible says, and see, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm, I'm, I'm very careful in my, in my wordage, in my verbiage on purpose, because I see, I want all these so-called philosophers, all, so, all these so-called agnostic atheists, all you so-called great thinkers, I, I laugh at you and I, I scoff at you because you're not half as smart as you think you are. Because the Bible says, the fool have said in their, their heart, there is no God. And see, just because you think there's no God doesn't mean it's not true. See, people try to get into these so-called debates and they want to uh, prove how smart they are. Mm -hmm. And many of you who may be in college right now or have your degree, whether you got an undergrad or an advanced degree, you really aren't all that smart. God is smarter than everybody. And we are all children. So your best bet is to come down a few notches and stop and think about this. One of the things that really messed people up when I came back to the Lord was because people think that Pentecostal believers uh, are not that learned, it threw people off because they said, well, he comes from a smart family. You know, and he believes in that Holy Ghost stuff. 
But what it was, I believed in the real Holy Ghost stuff, right. not the fake stuff. Right. You know, you know, anybody get up and shout dance. But that's all you saw where I come from. You saw no miracles. You saw no signs. You saw no wonders. But then I was having miracles, signs, and wonders, and the folk back home got mad with me. And on top of that, I didn't act like they acted. So I just messed everybody up. The people from my missionary Baptist background were messed up because <laughs> I remember how my Uncle Bud described me. Uh, my uncle was a deacon in, in Eastern Star Missionary Baptist Church in Tarboro, North Carolina. Uh, the formal name is William Lee Taylor Jr., named after my grandfather, uh, my mom's dad. And uh, Uncle Bud tickled me because uh, he would tell people, he said, well, my nephew, he said he's Baptist and he's not Baptist, mm -hmm. you know, by him knowing what my background was. But I wasn't traditional Baptist. But see, I don't care for tradition. There was no Baptist. There was no Methodist. There was no Presbyterian. There was no Lutheran. Oh, there was no, yeah, there was no Church of God. There was no Church of God in Christ. You know, either you were a Christian or you weren't. They weren't even called Christian until they went to Antioch. So what I want people to do is understand is this broadcast is to help teach and train you so you can get something out of the Bible and to develop a stronger relationship with God. It's not based or predicated on your denomination. I could care less because your denomination cannot save you. Only Jesus Christ can. You can't clean yourself up. You can't make yourself worthy. Only the Son of God can do this for you. It has nothing to do with your socioeconomic background has nothing to do with your race, your ethnos, your nationality. It has nothing to do with how much education you have because we're all sinners shaped and born in iniquity. And we all need a savior. So we're here to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Now, with that being said, you know, again, you know, the Lord has been really having me speak by revelation. Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to speak about until maybe 24 hours or less. You know, I, I'll be meditating and be praying, but then something will happen, and then the Lord will speak. And see, the cool part about it is, is the Bible says, those that who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, sons and daughters. Uh, so the whole thing about it is, is being led because there's somebody, you're either watching me now, or you may be listening on a conference call. Uh, we have, I guess, we got an archive for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're either watching this live on the internet or you're watching an archive, but it's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to give out at this time. And that's what's so cool about God. God knows the message he wants to give out, and it's all within his design and his purpose. See, one of the biggest things that we miss it when we get caught up in tradition and religion and how folk train you mm -hmm. is that you miss what the Spirit is saying to the church. When we, If we truly speak as the oracles of God, we will speak what God wants to speak at that particular time because that's the message that the Holy Spirit wants to give out. And it's really interesting how the Lord started this message. I was on Facebook a few days ago, and a young lady who I went I went to uh, uh, Guilford College with, she's a young uh, black woman, businesswoman. Uh, she has her MBA now, um, and she's developing a personal relationship with God. I mean, she really is because I'm watching her make certain statements. And like all of us, you know, we're all learning. But I, I've, watched, I've watched her make certain statements. And they were biblically sound. Now, she she was the one I told you to ask a few weeks ago. Well, I guess maybe it was a month or so ago. She asked, what was anointing oil? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, so everybody seemed shocked that she didn't know. But she comes from a 
traditional missionary Baptist background like myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, some folks might say she comes from, from a Saditi church. I'm going to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, right. yeah, but, uh, but, I, but, I'm, but she's making certain statements. And I, for her to be, have that insight, I know she's getting something out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So she's developing. Mm -hmm. And see, we're all, hey, we're all growing and learning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm praying for her to continue that development. And what come up was she brought up about there was a young man that, uh, you know, he's trying to get a date with her. And she was saying, I think he's educated, uh, nice looking, uh, financially secure. Um, I guess, I think she said, you know, he was uh, well-behaved, well-spoken, et cetera. But she said, now she used the term, uh, she used like like word of, like like a word, word uh, a gift of discernment. She said she discerned that he was mean, mm -hmm. and that it was that interesting. And she said, "No, nah, I can't can't go for that because mm -hmm. she could never see herself in a relationship that she could see mm -hmm. that you know she said that meanness would come out later on." Mm -hmm. And she said she did not want to get hooked up with anybody like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was rather interesting. And so, oh yeah, she said it was God fearing. You know, and, and one young lady, she gave the comment. And she said, I don't understand how a person can be God-fearing and be mean. And see, but I'm going to show you how much scripture she knows. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> you know, see, hey, just like the late Kenneth Hagin Sr. said, when you talk to people, you get to talking to them, you can locate them. And see, what did I say earlier? Study to show thyself approved, a workman who needs not be ashamed. Rightfully dividing the word of truth. And what have you heard me say many, many times? People have a problem because they don't have enough word in word them. Yeah. And so the young lady who commented, it's obvious she didn't have that much word in her. Because, and I, you know, I, I quoted some scripture and I put it in and I told him, Paul admonished Christians. Right. And he reminded them that they may have been saved, but they were carnal. And I what and the comment I made was you can be God fearing, but you can be carnal. You're led by your flesh still. Your flesh still is not under subjection. Therefore, you're going through changes and he may not, he may know that he's got a mean streak, he may not. Mm -hmm. Uh but whose responsibility is to get that main streak under control? Is it? He is his. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of times people will know something is wrong with them, but they'll say, I'm all right, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because what they'll do is they'll talk about all the good stuff. Right. Yeah, self-righteousness. Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's right. The self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. filthy rags. See? And so it's interesting because, see, what did Paul say? Oh, wretched man that I am that I find a war going on in my members, mm -hmm. that I find myself, what, doing the very thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing, yeah, because your flesh going to fight you. Your flesh did not get saved. Your spirit did. Therefore, your flesh is going to cut up. The Bible talks about dying daily, but we have to continue to die. Now, here's what I part of my answer was, I said, what the young man would need to do is he would need to put his flesh under subjection. He might need to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. But depending on what kind of teaching and training he's getting in the church, he may not know this. Mm -hmm. you know, Or he might be in an environment where he's being told and just not be doing it. You know, because, you know, I mean, a lot of times, sometimes these pastors are telling their congregation the right stuff. Mm -hmm. But we don't always do what the, the pastor or the Holy Spirit is telling us about doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, and I saw that the person that, I, that started the conversation, she hit light, mm -hmm. you know, because I, you know, so the thing about it is, is, and see, just doing that alone gave edification. Right. Because edification means to bring, to build that people or a person up.
So they were able to go and say, well, let me look in the Bible and see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. See? So, so just by that young lady saying that she didn't understand how you be God-fearing and be mean. You know, so that, I said, well, you don't know no word. You don't have no word in you. Mm -hmm. You know, so the thing about it is, is we all have got issues. I'm, I'm getting tickled now thinking about this because and I think I think I told you what what uh, what I said. There was a couple, and I, I I can't remember where they were from, and we were having breakfast, and, you, and I was sitting to the table, and your mother went to go go get something, and I was sitting to the table, and I, somehow people got to talking about marriage, you know, because mostly it was mostly couples that were there, mm -hmm. and uh, I said I'll soon be married in a few months, it'll be thirty five years, mm -hmm. and one brother that was sitting over on the side, he said, well it'll be we've been married twenty seven years, and he said. He said, we both got issues. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, I said, well, I said, well, it's okay. I said, because Jesus Christ is the only perfect person I ever met. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he smiled. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, that's the only perfect person I ever met. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I want to remind people that when you get saved, you're still a regular person and you still have to deal with yourself. And regardless of what other folk do to you or towards you, you still have to deal with that person that you see in the mirror in the morning. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to bring outside folk into your life to get you stirred up. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn how to diffuse stuff within yourself. And it's a challenge. And, you know, I don't mind telling folk about myself. I had to turn my plate down. Mm -hmm. I had to turn my plate down because I'm from a small town. And when uh, I would see a lot of people, and I would see people that the Holy Spirit, through the word of knowledge, told me so-and-so is your enemy and they're doing evil against you. Mm -hmm. And they're lying on you and talking about you. And, see, I would see them and they see me, how you doing, Larry? And, see, I knew the evil intentions in the heart. I could tell some folk what they were wearing when they were talking to certain people. In fact, somebody that I prayed for and God had given them a great miracle, I saw what they were making a report on me to somebody else. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. God gave them a great miracle. Later on, I saw them making a report on me to some people, some of my enemies. Yeah. And I could have told them the very clothes that they were wearing because the Lord let me, in other, in other words, the Lord, again, like I said, this thing about seeing time, I've been time traveling, ain't nothing new. God let me see where they were at somebody's house, and I saw them, and they were, the Lord didn't let me see who it was, though, at that particular time, but God let me see, let me know the person that I prayed for and gave them a great miracle, they were making a report on me. And I could have told them the very clothes that they were wearing. But the Lord let me see it. So, um, so a lot of times if you have spiritual gifts, that'll cause you to go to your knees because God will show you the secrets of men's hearts. And when you know their evil intention, sometimes you got to pray. And sometimes you got to turn your plate down. You got to fast. Why? To keep your flesh under subjection so you won't punch him out. Because folk have no idea how tempted I have been in the time I, well, even before I, I met your mama. And that's been almost 35 years we've been together. But folk, see, that's what I'm saying. People don't realize that you get to bother Christians and it's really a dangerous thing you're taking life in your own hand because you don't know if they not going to be prayed up or if they just one day snap and just say, uh, I'm laying this aside for a few minutes and I'm tired of waiting on the Lord. I'm going to get you myself. And there's a very real possibility that in people the enemy tricks them, and they don't think about that. They think about, oh, they say, but you don't know. Folk backslide. Mm -hmm. and, and see, he wouldn't make it so bad. <laughs> see, my son's laughing. But it's true. And they can, all they got to do is backslide for about five minutes. <clears throat> and they can wind up inflicting much physical harm to somebody. Guess what? They can pray and get right back in the graces of God. And I'm not giving anybody license to yeah, sin. Now, see, I'm not giving you license to sin. 
But I will tell you, I've been so tempted one of my greatest enemies come in my house years ago, and I had to catch myself because I had him in my house, and I was this close to whipping him. I don't mind. I don't confess you good for the soul. And see, the same person come in my house ain't been two months ago. And I was able to sit and talk to him without flaring up. But that particular time years ago, I was that close to whipping him. He was standing over there by the sofa. And he saw my countenance change. And he, he got scared. Of course, the last time he came, he was hiding behind his wife when he stood the door. He put his wife in front and he was standing behind her. And he still didn't repent before he left here. Set up and talked about everything else except confessing his sin and getting clean before God. But I was very tempted that particular time. There have been other instances, but that particular time, he almost got it. I had to catch myself. I was that close to whipping him. And I took Taekwondo, and I'm a big, strong man to start with. But I've been trained how to use my hands and feet. So it really doesn't take a lot. It only takes eight pounds of pressure to break a collarbone. Only eight pounds of pressure. So, you know, people don't realize that you get tempted in this, this world. I've had people uh, come up on me and push me, do different stuff to me to see if I would strike them back. Oh, there's all kinds of foolishness that people will do because you're a Christian. You know, they'll, they'll do crazy stuff, call themselves trying it. And see, if you haul off and, and, and pimp slap them, they both will say something's wrong with you. But the Bible, and this was just Paul speaking to other Christians. He said, provoke ye not one another. Again, because folk don't have enough word of them. Paul's even telling Holy Ghost filled Christians. Don't start, stuff. don't start nothing. I just tell I tell people, I've been saying this since I was a young blood. Don't start nothing, won't be nothing. You know? Yeah, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. So even as a Christian, you're not supposed to provoke another Christian. For you to do so is sin. And you might cause your brother or your sister to sin. But if you start something, keep your mouth shut if they pop you in your mouth. I'm very serious about that because people don't recognize they do stuff wrong. Then they want to say, well, wait a minute, you done so and so and so. Yeah, but you provoke me. You, you, you can't figure that the person's not always going to strike back. See, this is how the enemy will trick people. So you have to really watch yourself. That's why you want to treat people with respect. And keep your hands to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now that's just all there is to it. As my daddy said, pass and repass. Daddy said, pass and repass. And then daddy said, I'm gonna feed when a person would be a person that has caused a problem, or you know, you see that they not gonna treat people fairly or treat him fairly, he's I'm gonna feed you with a long handle spoon. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm gonna deal with you on a limited basis. And even before I was in Christ, I tried to, to act that way with people. If I saw that you were going to be a problem, well, I, you know, if I see you, I speak to you, talk to you, but we're not we're not going to have dealings. And there's nothing wrong with a Christian doing that. If there's a person that you see, they're going to fly up and start stuff, then why are you going to try to spend a lot of time around them? Unless the Lord would lead you, there's no need to. Now, if you got to work around a person, you definitely got to do a lot of praying. You have to. But if you're not in a situation where you just had to be around them, then you don't have to go out of your way to, to try to be around that person. Yeah, that's another mistake that people make. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. They do. They do because see, a lot of times you're going to be tempted. Mm -hmm. This person may tempt you. And so the thing about it is, is like my daddy said, I'm going to feed you with a long handle spoon. Willie Boy had a few good wise sayings, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but see, the little most people to learn how to act. It, there's a certain way that we need to act. You know, um, a lot of times people will say stuff to inflame you. Mm -hmm. And you have to catch yourself, you know, and sometimes we don't we don't catch ourselves. We don't always pass the test, cause what, we're human. You know, and we don't always pass the test, mm -hmm. you know. Well, that's cool too, because the I, well, I see it's something I need to be praying about, you know. So let's see, the whole thing about being a Christian is there's a practicality to it. And people miss that. There's a practicality 
to walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit. And since Jesus Christ is the only perfect person I ever met, that means we all sin. We all come, what, short of the glory of God. But what we're doing is we're, we're, we're working to get closer and to walk more in that fullness of that glory. Now, um, again, same thing, because see, the Lord trying to, the Lord's out to get some folks with good teaching because that's what's wrong. A lot of folks being preached that, but they're not being taught anything. And see, remember, Jesus was the master teacher or the Rabboni. You go back and look at what Jesus taught. He was always teaching people to get them to understand how the kingdom operated. So there's a practicality to this because you got to live with folk who are in Christ and out of Christ. And let's face it, you got to deal with folk in church. And everybody in church is not saved. You know that, I know that. But Christians can and do sin. And Christians commit sin against other Christians. So many, many times you have to deal with a Christian that may have done something offensive to you. Now, sometimes it's out of ignorance. They don't know what they're doing. But sometimes they know what they're doing because their flesh is uh, not of subjection. And they're carnal, and they're still doing stuff they don't need to do. The Bible talks about feet, people whose feet are quick to go to mischief. Uh, gossipers, backbiters, you know, folk are full of strife. Go to the fifth chapter of Galatians, and it outlines every fruit of the Spirit, but it outlines every work of the flesh. So write that down. Galatians 5. Go down through those scriptures. And you'll see every work of the Spirit, but you'll a fruit of the Spirit, you'll see every work of the flesh. And there are times when Christians are guilty of those works of the flesh. It ain't just sinners. Christians do stuff that's not right. Did not Jesus say that the time would come that people would do stuff and think they're doing God a favor? But they're ignorant and don't really know the leading and moving of his spirit. Sometimes the biggest persecution you'll ever run across is, yeah, it's Christians. It's Christians who don't know the word. They're carnal. They, they, they don't know the mind of the spirit. And a lot of times they'll criticize stuff. And I, I'll say it the same way that David Herzog said. After 10 years, they realize it's really God. And they done criticize you for nine and three quarters of nine and a half years or the whole ten years. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they realize, well, I guess it must really be God. Mm -hmm. But but they very seldom go back and say, well, I said so and so and so about that person and I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, what I found in my life is I found very few people that will admit that they were wrong about something. Mm -hmm. What Here's what folk do, and I bet a bunch of y'all have run across this. Somebody will mistreat you. But instead of coming to you and apologizing and saying I did thus or so wrong, will you forgive me? What they will do is they'll be around you and they, act, they treat you nice. Mm -hmm. They try to be extra nice. Mm -hmm. And they try to act like there was nothing that they did done that was offensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll act like everything's all right. Yeah. Just like um, the devil comes to the house and, he, and he's talking bruh. It's so and so and so, bro. So and so, bro. Calling the house, uh, uh, bro. Uh, uh, I think we need to get together. Now all of a sudden, I'm bro. Yeah. But for 35 years, you done lied on me. Mm. <laughs> 35 years, you've been working witchcraft. Mm. 35 years, you've been working for the Ku Klux Klan. Mm. And you're black. And I said that right. I've known my black people working for the Klan since 1976, 1977. And a bunch of folk got tricked listening to lies. And it's still based and predicated on folk not being right and hating Christ. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, when God begins to touch glory, let me talk a little bit about this glory. I guess the first time I really heard about the glory in the same instance was maybe 20 or more years ago, through Mar Cirillo. And I remember him saying that 
the glory was all that God has and all that God is. And that's why I realized I've been, I've been operating the glory for over 20 years. And it, you know, it's, it's not a new manifestation to me. I'm in a, I'm in a different manifestation of it. But I've operated in glory for a long time. And God has a plan for everybody's life. We get out of his plan sometimes, or either the enemy knows we're in God's plan and does everything he can to try to manipulate and throw it off. Again, we're still working on the same thing. Let me, uh, again, like I said, the young lady was talking about uh, marriage. We're talking about marriage in the sense how God wants it. And the young man who is one of my protégés, uh, Jason Walker, who walks in a prophetic anointing. And um, I looked on his Facebook page today and saw something really interesting. I'm going I'm to read this. I, I cut and paste this. It says, to all the men and women who are truly making an effort to do this relationship thing God's way, who have become frustrated that it either seems that there are no more good women, men out there, or you're simply growing weary, that they haven't manifested yet. I have a question for you to chew on. Have you thought of why he, she might be hard to find? That it's really you that might be hidden from them? And that they're thinking the same thing that you are? What I'm trying to say is this. If you're really in the will of God, no other means of trying to find a man or a woman is going to work except seeking the kingdom first. If all we're doing is seeking God for things and people, that's all we're going to get. The problem is that although these things, people, may bring some level of happiness to their lives, they don't have the will of God attached to it. Don't just wait. Develop, strengthen, and cultivate your relationship with the Father. Just Not just until he, she comes, but with plans of forever. And you say, yep. Mm -hmm. You know, which, and I said, I said, wow, the mind of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I realized even more so, because the Lord already spoken to me, that he wanted me to talk about marriage, but marriage from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. Marriage is set up as a covenant between a man, a woman, and God. The Bible makes it very clear. It says that a man shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife. And they shall become, the twain shall become one flesh. There's a oneness in that. That's a mystery to becoming one. Paul said, I speak, but I speak what? I miss the mystery. There are a lot of mysteries, but you don't get to even begin to understand the mysteries until you get into the realm of the spirit. Now, here's the difference between what the world teaches and what God teaches, and what the church is teaching. Oh, did you catch what I just said? Hmm. Yeah. What the world teaches, what God teaches, and what, and what the church teaches. The world says you go out in the world, and you meet somebody, you fall in love, and y'all get married. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I can't help but laugh about it. Now, what God teaches is you need to depend on him to bring your mate to you. In other words, what you do is you're supposed to get your life straightened out, supposed to, supposed to get saved. And I'm going to elaborate on everything that I'm talking about in a minute. But the church teaches pretty much the same thing that the world teaches. Just They just call themselves throwing God in it. Now, here's what I was taught. Now, like everybody else, you know, you hear all this stuff. But um, I was in Columbus, Ohio. My sister got saved in 1971, a few months after I uh, graduated from high school. I was in Columbus, Ohio, when she got saved, and she was well taught. And she talked about when you become a Christian, that you ain't supposed to even think about marrying nobody else unless they're a Christian. Not a church person. I didn't say a church person. I didn't say a church-going person. Because you go to church all your life and never know Christ. There are people in the church right now who are 80 years old and have never been saved. And they've probably been going to church since before they could remember. But they don't have a relationship with God. Now, with that being said, even though two people are saved, still don't mean that they're supposed to date and, and go and get married. 
you can still marry the wrong person and both of y'all be Christians. Because marriage is a covenant. And marriage is ministry. Here's what most people do. Most folk, they're in the world. They meet somebody. They get married. One gets saved. Well, hopefully the other one gets saved. You have to pray, do whatever, you know. But sometimes when one gets saved, the other one leaves. Sometimes it's the man, sometimes it's the woman. But the Bible makes a reference to it and says if they want to leave, then you let them leave. But you, know, but, you know, you pray that they will get saved. And there are instances where that has happened, that they've been able to you know, pray them in. The Bible talks about a woman having the ability, you know, uh, and I don't care whether it's a church that's full of, all of those folk are just folk that ain't even saved. Most churches are full of women. If you take the women out of the church, there wouldn't be a bunch of a church. I don't care what church it is, you know. Um, but uh, and we're going to talk about God's requirements in this. But um, I want you to understand is that when you get saved, you're not supposed to marry anybody unless they're saved, and they're supposed to be the person that the Holy Spirit tells you to marry. So you hear what folk do. Um, a lot of women want to compromise, go get a boyfriend, get a husband. I, I've seen it happen, you know. And then you get women in the church who ain't right, and they'll tell that woman, oh, it's okay to, to uh, date that man. The man ain't saved. But if you ain't careful, a lot, a lot of times, that unsaved man will get you to backslide. <laughs> and vice versa, if you're the man trying to date this woman that's that's not saved. A lot of times, the, the person winds up, they want to backslide because of it. Now, since I was taught that you're only supposed to marry the person that God tells you to marry, that's how I pursued marriage. But see, I was given that wisdom and that insight. Mm -hmm. So when I got saved, I'd already been dating somebody for a good three years. Well, I wanted to marry the girl. I wanted to marry the girl before I got saved. But I knew I was better not married, I was, and, and she wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. I knew better. So I started praying for God to save the woman. And after a while, God said, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> I left about now, but I was hot about it. Mm -hmm. I was mad. Yes, I was mad with God and big deal. But I was hot. Mm -hmm. I was mad. Why? Because that's what, you want. that's what I wanted. Yeah, it's what I wanted. And God said, not so. Mm -hmm. This is not the vessel that I've chosen for you to marry. So it took me a while to get over it. Yeah, it did. I was mad with God about that thing, too. Yes, I was. So I understand how folks can get mad with God and thank God for his mercy. Because who are we to get mad with God? <laughs> the Bible says we are like grass that wither away. You know? So, that, but so you know, so, so see, I'm human like everybody else, you know? But knowing that that's what I was supposed to do, and I wound up dating somebody else, but it didn't work out. She was a church person, but she won't say. So what I did was I began to consecrate myself. Now let me start reading some scripture to you. In Proverbs, Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. Genesis 2 says, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. Page 786. Okay. That's the definition I want to find. Okay. okay. Um, so we're going right back to the garden, to the beginning, because Genesis means beginning. God created Adam. Or what we call Adam, which means of or from the earth, from the soil. But God decided it's not good for man to be alone. So see, God created Eve from the rib of Adam because in that those two become a completion. So see, there's a purpose for marriage, not just for procreation not just to create children, it's ministry. It's to be able to, to, to show the world what the family unit is supposed to be about. Shows man how to live. 
in how to bring people into the kingdom. Because see, God's always thinking about the kingdom. Proverbs 12 and 4 says, A wife of noble character is a husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. Now you notice the Bible's talking about the woman mm -hmm. and when she's the wife. Mm -hmm. And really, I think you really find more in Proverbs it's talking about a woman, mm -hmm. a woman of virtue. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, Proverbs 19 and 14. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Give me the definition of prudent. It means uh, practically wise. Careful of consequences or measures or actions. Uh, it means judicious, cautious, and circumspect. Okay, now see, here's what people miss. Now, I, I know this is just from being a man. Even when I was a, a, a backslidden young man, men brag on their wives. See, y'all women might not know it. Your husband may not tell you, but men brag on their wives. And I know this when I was a young man, when I was single, especially, guys that were already married, they would say, man, I got a good wife. And they would, you know, begin to talk about solely the woman's virtues. Especially, say, like, you know, my old lady, that's in, that's in my old lady. And ain't no need for nobody to get mad about that. You know, it's just, just an expression. A lot of times they were women in their early 20s, but you know, that's just what they do, how they would express it sometimes. So we said, well, my old lady doesn't do nothing. So, you know, my old lady ain't hanging in the street. You know, she ain't out getting drunk. She ain't out cutting up, you know. Uh, and I'm from a small town, and I will tell you this about being from a small town. Your reputation is everything. That's why when a person starts lying on you and maligning mm -hmm. your reputation, yeah, you might take exception to it mm -hmm. because that's your that's your good name mm -hmm. that they're doing all in the street, mm -hmm. you know. So you can, yeah. So yeah, I would take exception to that. The stuff I've done, yeah, but you lie on me. That yeah, I I, I find that a bit offensive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, simply because now you telling all you slandering me uh, behind my back while you grinning in my face, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and see, another thing about a wife, too, a lot of time a wife will pick up on something that the husband don't see. Now, listen to this. Even if you are a prophet, you don't see everything. Nobody sees everything. Now, let me give you a bit of an example. In the Old Testament, the prophet was coming into this particular city. A woman sees the prophet come. She tells her husband, you know what? That's a man of God. Let's make a place for him. So she gives him a table and a candlestick, sets him up a place to stay. The prophet looks at his man's servant and says, hey, is that, what, did, what do you think this woman? This woman, she's, she's good to us when we come through this city. Uh, you think there's anything she needs? First of all, he asked the man's servant. What do you think that she needs? Mm -hmm. And the manservant looked and said, there's no feet of little children. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh. So he goes to the woman, he prophesies to her and said, at a certain time, you will have a child. She said, man, God, don't mock me. Mm -hmm. You know, now see, now she, now she knew he was a man of God. But she had never had a child before, and even though he spoke that truth, and this will happen, this is a lesson for you. Sometimes God will have a person speak a prophetic word to you, and you don't believe it. And even though she knew it was a man of God, even though she knew it was a prophet, when he spoke that to her, man, she went right into unbelief. But he said, nine months' time, you have a child. Guess what? She has a child. Okay. Years pass. The child's out in the field. I don't know if the child had a stroke or whatever, but the child died. The woman got the child a, and laid the child in the, in the room. And the husband said, uh, what's wrong? She said, it is well. Mm -hmm. Now, she caught faith in those years. Mm -hmm. 
See, so what did she do? She had what? A positive confession. The Bible talks about the confession or profession of your faith. She said it as well. So the man of God shows up and he tells his manservant, he says, same manservant though, now that was wise enough to tell him there was no children. The child is dead and but the woman says, it is well. But the prophet sees that the child is dead. And so, and this is my point I was making. The prophet goes, tells, tells his servant, the Lord have hid it from me. So you can still have a prophetic gift. But sometimes you're not going to get that insight as to what's happening unless your wife tells you. Let's have a say that moment. Let's stop and calmly think about that. Now it, can, it can go vice versa, but we're talking about the wife at this particular juncture in this teaching session. Sometimes my wife has seen something that I missed. Sometimes there have been other ministers of the gospel. Their wife has seen something that they missed. And so it would behoove all of us men to pay attention to what our wives say. Because sometimes they're not just speaking as the woman that you marry, they're speaking as the oracle of God. And many times they're going to see something that you didn't see. I know when we first got married, there were times that I would start praying about something and the Lord would put my wife to sleep. And she would see what I was praying about. Now, how can that happen except we were one? See, that's that mystery. See, again, it's a mystery. You can't figure the reason this thing out. Now, Western philosophy or theology will try to get you to do so. Now, let me say this because the Lord told me to make sure I say this tonight. When I started to operate in the word of knowledge, and I was living back home in Tarboro, North Carolina. People were not used to it. Now, even though I, but I was around a prophet. I was around uh, Reverend William Bell, who, who just flowed in the word of knowledge. And Charles Franklin Young, the prophet, <laughs> he flowed in it too. But Reverend Bell, man, Reverend Bell just tell you all kinds of stuff. Anyway, when I began to work in this, there was this particular woman, and thank God guys are finally releasing me to say some of this. Uh, I'm trying to remember, was I single or was I married? I've been married so long, it's hard to remember some of this stuff. But there was this particular woman that knew me. I'm going to tell enough that somebody, if they're from Tallboro, can figure out who I'm talking about. Not going to call a woman's name out. But if you if you listen to certain things that I say, you may catch it. Um, in the A group of Matilla, uh, when I went to school, uh, the first seven years, um, one of my classmates, he like myself, was you know, going to top boys in our class. Well, he comes from a smart family. His mom and his dad were smart, and so his mother reasoned when she started hearing that I could see stuff and tell stuff. The Lord showed me in a dream. Joel 228. The Lord showed me that she thought, well, Larry has learned some type of mental thing. And he's learned this mind power thing. See, so she see, I was in class with her son. So she knew I was a top student. So she felt like I had learned some kind of mental technique that I, in other words, I had psychic powers. It had nothing to do with the Bible. It was some kind of psychic ability that I had learned that I could tell people stuff. Now, here's the clue, the other clue. And you'd have to be an inside person to know. And if somebody from Tarboro is watching this, this is going to get folk to talk and trying to find out. My parents bought the house I grew up on Baker Street before I was born. It was during World War II. Well, they bought 
the lot right behind where I grew up on Elm Street. This particular woman owned that lot that my parents bought on Elm Street. So if either somebody in her family or somebody can ask around Tallboro, you know who the woman is. Now, I wanted to go tell the woman that I knew, but the Holy Ghost stopped me. Because I can honestly say, you know, I'm a nice person, but I can be very confrontational. Very confrontational. And people have no idea how many times the Holy Ghost has told me, no, you can't tell them now. And, and because of how he is, some in God's wisdom, it is more edifying now to tell that than it would have been then. Because now people can look back and realize I knew this, this long ago. There's so many things that God has allowed me to tell that have happened in the past to let people know that I do a lot of things that I kept my mouth shut. So one of the things too about having gifts of the spirit is that you learn to have wisdom. You don't tell everything that you know at that particular time. There is a time and there is a season to open your mouth. And sometimes you can open your mouth out of turn. Now, in the mind of God, and God only knows, this may prove to somebody that wanted for years. Because, see, God in his infinite knowledge and infinite glory, because the Bible says we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So the Lord is letting folk know there's a lot of stuff. And as, as time progresses, I will continue to tell stuff that I have known mm -hmm. for a long time. Now, we lived here in a few weeks. It'll be 27 years. Mm -hmm. But we live in Tallboro. And I think I told your mother when, this, when I had that dream. So I'm, I'm going to say that dream happened at least 30 years ago or longer. You know, I can't remember every year to every little dream I had, but it's been a long time ago. But the Lord told me not to tell it. But for me, and now I'm releasing it now. And it could be somebody who's watching me knows exactly who owned that land on, on, on Elm Street that my parents built the house, second house on. And, you know, I used to go to the woman's house when I was a kid when I, at, when I was at Patella. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, she's a very intelligent woman. So she says, well, that is intelligent, like, you know, like his family. So... You know, people don't realize, people want to talk about stuff in the natural. How would you like your brother to skip two grades and your sister to skip one? Now, you think that that was a pressure on me, what I wanted it to be or not? Now, I didn't really perceive it as pressure, but I knew there were expectations. Yeah, my brother skipped two grades, and he didn't go to school in Tarboro. He was in Newport News, Virginia. Both my uh, siblings went to school in Virginia first. They didn't go school in North Carolina until my parents moved back after World War II. So it's like people have no idea. I once told somebody that. I said, well, you talk about you were under pressure. I was under more pressure than you. When I told them about my brother and sister, it freaked them out. Uh, the reason why I didn't skip a grade because my mama thought I'd be a runt like her, like like the first child. Nobody knew I was going to be big like Uncle Harry. You know, your uncle was so small for so long. And imagine him being small and he skipped two grades. Right, yeah, people bullied. Yeah, yeah, he was he was bullied. Yeah, he was bullied. You know, they were mad he was that much younger than them and was smarter than them. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, he didn't talk about it. And I can understand he didn't, but I know he was, cause cause um, mama held me back, cause I was bored in the first grade. I, I was fluently reading by the time I was uh, Shanice's age. I read the newspaper when I was her age. Um, I remember sister taking me to Trisha Robinson's house and I was reading the paper and some of them said, oh, that's so cute. He act like he's reading. And sister said, he's not playing. He, he's, he's reading the paper. And they said, well, baby read. And I read for him and they got shocked. <laughs> you know, so it's like, but see, the thing about it is, is that's the ability that God gave me. See, I didn't give God credit for it until I got to be 25. I really thought, thought about, okay, you know, so it, anything, any ability that you have, God gave it to you. And you have to recognize that the Lord gave me the mind that he did uh, to teach the body of Christ. 
In, in fact, this book right here, thank God the Lord blessed me. I got my old dictionary back. This is a dictionary my sister had when she was at North Carolina Central University. Uh, how, how you do the thing? The eagle fly? Oh, the, uh, I think that's it. I yeah, okay, yeah. You know, uh, but anyway, um, this is a dictionary that my sister gave me when she was in college and I was in sixth grade. So this is a dictionary that I used to read. I remember James Cherry, you know, Pig Cherry asked me one time after I made a statement. He said, Larry, he said, do you read the dictionary? I said, yes, I do, Pig. I said, well, now, Go to the dictionary uh, and see a word that I don't know. You actually read the page, and and I'm claiming my ability back. I'm the kind of person I could read something, and I would just remember it. And so uh, I built my vocabulary by literally reading the dictionary. Um, so I'm real pleased to have this back. This is it's a part of me. This, this book is very, very important. I, I thank the Lord that I finally got it back. Been praying to get one of these for a long time. But uh, so you can be nerdy, and I, I, you know, I, I tell people, um, people in the body of Christ. But again, God's talking about a marriage that He puts together, and there's still two imperfect people being put together. So you still have to rely on God. You know, I, I first one raised my hand and said that I still need Jesus and I'm not perfect. Neither is my wife. But one thing I can say, the Lord put us together, and that's why the enemy been so upset. In-laws on both sides. I just got one sister. She got more than one. I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone though. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, the Bible, you know, it says, you know, What God had put together, let the man pull asunder. But man tries to pull it asunder. I think that's why he said it, because he knew yeah. some idiot was Oh, like, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always somebody that's mad. I think about all the women that, that, that are hot with your mama that were married, but if they knew the kind of life that I was had to live, they wouldn't think that, think that same thing. You know, they're looking at it in front of natural and not recognizing that a call of God's on my life mm -hmm. and that God did not call them to be with me. You know, now if I was living a different life, it'd be a different situation. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because really it boils down to the covenant that God brought between your mother and myself is why folk are broken their neck trying to break it. Mm -hmm. Yet they don't realize how dangerous it's been and God has been merciful to them. But uh, remember last week we were talking about God extending mercy. But see, the Bible says that God is slow in mercy. You know, he's plenteous, you know, in mercy and slow to anger. But it also says it's what? A dangerous thing that falls in the hands of an angry God. So when God gets tired, you really don't want to be there. Uh, let me read one, yo, let me read one more scripture for you. That's Proverbs 31 and 10. It says, a wife of no character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Now, my mama used to make this statement all the time. My mama used to always say, especially once I got to be a teenager and moved into my manhood to my 20s, she'd always make the statement. And she, she would say, you can find a good-looking woman anywhere, but to find a woman with some character. And then she would just... Yeah, let you think about it. Then she'd have her say, love woman. And I heard this from the time I was a teenager up until I got grown. She, every now and then she'd bring it up, you know, and see, I knew what she was saying. And so the thing about it is, is it is very, very important. The Bible talks about the virtues of women. They didn't always start off right, but as they built a relationship with God, they became virtuous. When David did what he did with Bathsheba, when he set that thing up, Bathsheba was just as wrong as David was. But at the same time, he used power on her because he was a king. <laughs> so she could have been thinking about well, if I don't get with the king, what's going to happen to me? 
there's a possibility, you know. But either way, David repented because the first child, you know, the first child died. He fasted and prayed, and the child died. And then he broke the fast after that. Some people wonder why he break the fast when the child was dead. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, that really was God's way of letting them know this child shouldn't have been born. Uh, God's a righteous judge. And we don't always understand what and why and how he does it. Um, but the time came from that human king, that, that union came Solomon. And so the thing about it is, is, and Solomon talked about his mother, that she was a virtuous woman. So even if you marry somebody you shouldn't have, and I'm speaking for the woman too, if you married a man you shouldn't have married, well, get it together, pray the person to the kingdom. You know, it can happen. It does. And we're going to believe that God is going to do that. We're gonna, and, you know, those of you who are single, just keep seeking the Lord. Lord let me tell you, Jason Walker said this bad boy right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on you. That's what I started doing. I started seeking the kingdom. And once I sought the kingdom and got myself together, then I met my wife. And all these women that's been married for the last 35 years need to stop being married. It just wasn't supposed to happen. It was I was in God's will. And there's one particular family that's mad. It's really silly on their part. But see, folk do that stuff. They want certain folk in their family. But see, God has a plan for people. And everybody has not been taught right. But what we want to do is we want to be wise. And we, we want God to bring Ishmael or Sandra down. We want God to bring his glory into your life. Um, and we're believing God for miracles tonight, as always. Uh, we're getting ready to bind the powers of darkness. And I'm going to pray uh, for people that are looking for them. I'm praying that you'll find each other, but I'm praying that you'll seek the kingdom and uh, not listen to man, but listen to the Holy Spirit and let God lead you to your mate. Even if you're married to somebody you shouldn't have married, well, we're just going to pray about, about your marriage. That God is going to uh, come into your, that union uh, and that wayward husband or wife uh, will come into the kingdom. Uh, and that you'll uh, solidify your relationship with him in, in any way, be your husband or wife. And uh, I know that's what the Lord really wanted to do, uh, the way he spoke. It's just amazing how uh, the Bible said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you know, everything shall be established. And, and so the Lord really spoke very, very strong. In fact, I'm about to break out the sweat. It's not going to naturally eat. It's just because of the unction that is in here. And the glory, the glory hasn't even really, really rolled in here yet. But, uh, we're going to uh, pray about a lot of things here. We're going to believe that God is going to do something that is going to bring more and more glory into people's lives. And remember, we are on a miracle march to Pentecost. Uh, we're getting ready now. Pray, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the leading and moving of the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that the realms of glory, Lord, I feel the, the glory being stirred now, even as we uh, have started this prayer. Lord, first of all, Lord, I pray about the mind of Christ, Lord. You said in the word, let this mind be you. It was also in, in Christ Jesus, and that was to do the will of the Father. So, Father, I pray that people will come and have the mind of Christ. For as they come and have the mind of Christ, Lord, that they will do the works. Eshara, the Sandra, or Spirit, ascend today. Robert and Chandra, Omen and Jared, the Lord, the Sarada, the Basande, and that Lord, that they will put their mind on the work of the kingdom. For you say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ready be under Oshmara, the Sandra, Omen and Jared, so Robert and Chandra, the Sandra, Omen and Jared, the Basande, Robert and Chandra, Omen, the Sandra, Oshmara, the Sabah, Robert and Abasor, the Sandra, Oshmara, the Basande. Robert out of a sender, a smirror, the sender, omen in Driado. Robert out of a sandra, o smire, the sender, omen in Dida. Rose, shomara, the sender, o smire, the esmerid out of a sandra, o smirida. Father, I pray, Lord, for those who are seeking, Lord, a wife, a husband. Lord, I pray that they will esmerid out of a sandy, that they will be led by the Spirit. 
Father, I pray that you will speak to them so strong in their spirit. I pray, Lord, that the voice of God will speak. Give them an inward witness, Lord. Speak in their ear. Speak, Lord, in the night season, Lord. Let them have a dream. Let them have a vision, Lord. If necessary, let them see it twice. Father, I pray that you speak so strong, Lord, to let them know to wait on the Lord. Lord, I remember when I was a single man, Lord, and I was seeking a wife. For the Bible says the man that found a wife, he does a good thing, Lord, and obtains favor. But, Lord, I had to learn how to wait on you. I remember Charles Young saying, wait on the Lord. And, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, for every principality and power, every rule of darkness, every wicked spirit in high places, Lord, I bind every witch, wizard, soothsayer, astrologer, Father, I bind every chin, every incantation. I bind Lord, I bind every I bind every candlestick, every incense, I bind those that would pervert the word of God. Rasa, Terra de Sindra Oshmiradaba. Lord, I rebuke every lying devil. Lord, I bind every every spirit of strife, every spirit of jealousy, Lord. I just rebuke Father, I bind every sister. Father, I command a full reversal seven times. Seven times. Let it go back sevenfold. According to your word, Lord, you said the enemy shall come before you one way and flee before you seven. And Lord, I bind everything, every and Father, I just bind this person from West Virginia. Father, let every dwelling place, Lord, that our enemies live in, Lord, let this same glory roll in the house, roll in their apartment, Lord. Lord, let this Eshma, let this glory settle in every room that they live in. Let the glory rest, Lord, where they work. Lord, let it be in their office, Lord. Let it be in their department. Father, 
the Lord of this about to wrote to us, Mary, this era. Ross the Bishop Mary, this era, the Basondo, Shima. Robin Alaba said, the Basondo, Sherry, the Basondo. Father, the Dessa, a Sherry, the Sarah, the Saba. Robin, the Basendo, Sherry, the Sa. Ross said, the Sarah, the Cindy, Recebir, the Sira, the Sada. Robin Alaba Sunday, a Sherry, the Sendo, Sherry, the Ba. Roar in the Sendo, Sherry, the Basande. Robin is Sunday, Sherry, the Ba Sunday. A share in the Sunday, Shmira Dadabo. Rose, Shemara de Sandrudo. Robin is Sendo, Sherry, the Ba Sunday. Father, let your glory continue the Isher of the Sunday. Rese to, Rede Sindrudo. Robin Dada Ba Sando, Sherry, the Ba Sunday. Father, let the crooked places be made straight. Isher de Sendo, Rose, Mara de So. Rose, Beshondo, Sherry, the Ba. Robin is the Sendo, Sherry, the Ba Sa. Rose, do Sherry, the Sendo, Sherry, the Robin Dada Ba Sando, Sherry, the Ba Sunday. Rose, Rede Sara, the Sandrude. Father, let there be shot out about that also under the day. Ray, share the sendo, share it out of a Sunday. Rosso, ready, said to Vaso, and a Sunday. Rode, they spare the sendo, share it so. Robert out of a Sunday. Father, let the glory roll in Las Vegas. Ready, no sure in the city. Ray, say, Barota, Sondo, O Shmiradada. Radabada, a Sando, share it out of a Sunday. Lord, let him not forget Radada, a Sunday. What happened in China? Rosso, a share of that of a Sunday, Lord. Lord, let the glory rest in the seed, Lord. Roll but out of a Sunday, or share it out of a Sunday. A share of the Sindo, Rasa, a spirit out of a Sunday. Ready be under, or spirit out of a Sunday. Lord, I just rebuke Radasa, a share of Asa. Rosso, Radasa, a share of Asa. Rosso, Radasa, a share of Asa. Roto, Rosada, a Sunday, Radasso. Rose Rene Sindo, Shiridana, Robadana Basa, Rasa, Eshe, Rosso, Rindi, Rasa, Rinde, Rosso, Ishma, Rande, Rasa, Eshmo, Ishma, Rando, Ishma, Esse, Rando, Eshe, Rasa, Riba, Rosso, Ishma. Father, I just thank you. Reach out to all spirit this in the day. It's sharing the other and our sorrow and our Sunday. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for I feel, Lord, how you're just moving through feet. It's sharing the other Sunday. Lord, I thank you for reversing every issue. This is the other and our soul. Rose, Shema, Rade, Sarah, and our Sunday. Rose, Rade, Sandra, O Spirit, and our Sunday. Rose, and our Sunday, and our Sunday. Ready be Andrew Oshmira out of a Sunday. Rasa, Rodos, Barry, the Sunday. Rose, Rodana, a Sunday. Father, shake the Illuminati, Lord, from top to bottom. Rasa, Ishmira, and a Basad, Rodoso. Rose, Rede, Sandra, Oshmira. Ready be Sando, Shirad, and a Sunday. Rose, Rada, Sando, Shiradasa. Rose, Rada, Basando, Shirad, and see. Rese, Rodoso, Bore, and Samara, and Srava. Rosso by Samara de Rode by Sandro Oshmirada. Father, shake them up, Asa. Toro da da Basando Shiradasa. Father, shake them, Lord, in the two houses in front of me. Eshirada da Basando. Let the glory, Lord, saturate and permeate both houses. The very grounds, Lord, the vehicles that they're driving. Eshimere de Sindo Oshmirada. Rasabato Basala. Father, touch everyone involved, Lord, in the house. Behind me, Lord, Radasa. Everybody, Lord, for the past twenty odd years. Rosso, each spirit out of Sunday. Let the glory saturate and permeate every house, every apartment, Lord. Every meeting place. Ishmere de Sunday. The house on the corner, Lord. Rasa. Terada Sando Shirada. Father, every house as a basondo. That is associated, Lord. Ishmael of Asunder, all their associates, Rasa, Ishme, Rosso, Ishma, Rande, Rosso, Rese, Inta, Pase, Rosso. Father, let those Lord who have mocked you, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that you are real. 
The Lord, we just bind the people, Lord, that are meeting out in the county, Lord, They're in the backwoods. We just rebuke them. Father, let your glory saturate and permeate the meeting places. Let everything reverse. Father, read out of the sword of the spirit, under the spirit of Rose, Shema, Redera, Da, Sondra, Do. Rose, Rede, Sindra, O Spirit, Ada, Basada. Rende, Rada, Da, Da, Sandro, Shere, Da, Sa. Rende, Rada, Da, Sora, De, Sindra, Da, Da, Basso. Rose, Be, Shendra, O Menindra, Rede, Be, Da. Roba, De, De, Basando, Shere, Da, Da, Basande. I speak healing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I speak healing to every system. I speak healing to your blood, to your lungs. Isherada, to your heart, to your kidney, to your spleen, to your intestinal system, to your reproductive organs, to your skeleton, to your nerves system, to your nerve I speak to your adrenal system. I command your hormones to balance. I command estrogen and protesterone. Testosterone. I command normalcy in your body. I command the pressure in your eyeballs to be normal, your blood pressure. I command cataracts to die. I rebuke glaucoma. I command nerve endings in the eye to regenerate. Ishmore de Sindro, Shere de Sindrida, Rosa Bishondra, Orban Injury, Dada Basande. I bind diabetes. I curse it. I command it to die. Yeshamara de Sindra del So. Rese Bishondo Oshmira Alabasande. I rebuke curvature of the spine. Spinal bifida. Come out. Eshimera de Sindro. Rada Basando. Eshmira Rada Basolo Basande. I speak fatness to your bones like the Bible says. Reshimera de Sindra, O Spirit out of a Sunday. Let the very marrow of your bones be re reinvigorated. Ishme, Rosori de Serra da Sandra do Si. Radabel del Sondo, Sherry de Sindra da So. Rebelondra Oshmara de Sindra, O Spirit de Sandra do. Robert Sandra Oshmirel Abasande. I command the small of the back, the lower lumbar. I command that pain to stop, to cease. I command the spinal, Eshmirada Sondo Shirada Abasande. Eshmirada Sindra Oshmirel Abasande. I command healing in the Eshmirada Abasande, in the base of your spine. Rose be sure the Sindra Doshima. Rest be sure the Sindra Oshmirada. Rasa Basondo, share the Sindra Oshmirada or Das Baradodo. Rose be sure the Sindra Oshmirada or Das Rasa, Redis Maradendo Omanindridi. Riando, share the Sindra Oshmirada of a Sandrida. Lord, just work it out. Father Ishmarada, Samara de Samara de Sarado, Rose the Road to Bishamara de Rada Besundra Oshmirade, Robadesh Merida Sandra Oshmirada de Basandrade, Robadesh Merida Samara de Rada Bosorada, Robadesh Era de Sandra Oman in Jerry de Biodo, Robadesh Mara de Rada Besamara de Rada Mirada Basso, Robadesh Merida de Basande. Lord, I just thank you for every miracle, Lord, that you are working right now. I thank you, Lord, for bringing people into the kingdom. For the first time, Lord, I thank you for bringing backsliders back. I ask the Bible, the sender, O Spirit, out of my son today. 
I thank you, Lord, for deepening your relationship with people right now. Rose to be Shamara de Samara de to be about Robert de Shamara de Besondra of our son, Omen in the Father, I pray that we are sensitive to the leading and moving of your spirit, that we will be able to hear what the spirit is saying to us. We are the church, that we'll be able to see what you want us to see, those of us, Lord, who are part of the church. Lord, help us to be doers, Lord, not just hearers of the word. Help us, Lord, to be the organs of God, Lord, that we may boldly speak the word. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge and understanding, Lord. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will pull the veil back, that we might be able to see the mysteries of the gospel, Lord, that we might be able to get those nuggets out, and that we might be able to share them with others. And wake and shake up my brother, Lord, you just showed to me. You got everything done, Lord. It's, in, it's a time. We can shake him up, Lord. Let him know, Lord, that I'm praying for him. Raise him as all those spirit out of the sandra, though. Rose me she married there to be a sandra woman in the eye. Robert there to be so old as a basandre. He missed it the first time he met me, Lord. I pray that he does not miss it the second time. Ish married the sandra or spirit out of a soul. Rose she married the sandra or spirit out of a sa. Rada Basendra Oshmiri de Sendra Omen in Judy. Robert Edabasor de Alabasandra Oshmiri Adabasa. Rosa Mori de Sendra Oshmiri Adabasa. Rosa Ori de Sirada Basor de Sandra Day. Roman in the Shore de Sendra Oshmiri Da. Father, we thank you to pull back the veil, Lord, as you take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Let the glory continue to manifest, Lord. And as always, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. But Lord, all the glory is thine. Mm. Jesus, Father, I must say, Rosiver is a for and they send you down. Rosibi Shabara Dero to Lord as a Sindri Yo. Rosera the Sindra O Smirid out of a soul. Rosera the Sindra O Smirid out of a disundi down. Rosera the Basor the Sindra O Smirid out. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Uh, glory. Oh, it's thick in here. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord, let your glory saturate the very grounds. Brother, my daughter, my soul, the dungeon, only in Jordan. Rose of Ishma, my dear, to the sun, the only in Jordan. Rose of Lord, the sun, the only in Jordan, the beautiful sound of heaven. Rose of the sun, the most spirit of our soul, the sun. Father, let the Ishma, the sun, the only in Jordan. Rose of Ishma, my dear, to the sun, the only in Jordan. Father, let the Ishma, the sun, the only in Jordan. Lord, you have a plan with our soul, with our sun, the only in Jordan. Lord, you got a plan with all right out of my Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. The Lord's presence is thick in this room, and I believe the Lord's presence is thick where you are. <laughs> you know, respect the person. <laughs> yeah, I felt the Lord's been blessing. <laughs> the Lord moving through your feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Lord is uh, doing, doing some things. So wherever you are, right now I know the Lord's blessing you. What we want you to do is we want you to share these videos with your friends. Uh, those people who are seeking God, those who are good for business, and uh, if they're not on fire, they want to get on fire. Because <laughs> Holy Ghost fire, <laughs> it'll get on you. Yeah. And uh, so go to the mission page, the Ecclesia Greensboro, our Facebook page. We have a, we have a YouTube page too, mm -hmm. um, for the Ecclesia Greensboro. And um, share, share the videos on Facebook. Um, and let people know we're here to minister to the body of Christ. Uh, that's, what it's, that's what it's about. Um, we, want, we want to get to you. Uh, in the body, and what we want, we want you empowered. We want you to get stronger in the Lord in your relationship, and we want you to be able to work the works of God. A lot of you have gifts, prophetic gifts, but the minister you're under, your pastor, doesn't know anything about it. 
They're not anointed. He or she is not anointed in those areas. Therefore, they can't help you so far. And so I don't have to physically be where you are, uh, although I believe I'm going to meet some of y'all. I think God's going to going to work that out, and we're going to be able to be physically in the same house. But until that time, we can still meet over the Internet uh, and on the conference. We, we still keep our conference line, a phone call that can be made as well. Um, we'll continue to put that information out there. So, again, we're on every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, every Sunday, Sunday night at 7. Uh, we're just ministering, uh, however the Lord leads. We believe in praying for the sick, casting out devils. Uh, and yeah, I cast, I've cast out devils over the internet. I don't have to necessarily lay hands on them. That's the only one methodology. Um, God has various ways of how he'll do things. So uh, just believe God to be a supernatural God and all kind of good things will happen for you. Uh, so we'll be here Sunday. Uh, so until Sunday, we'll catch you next time.